Okay, in today's video, we're going to go over an example problem involving impulse and momentum. This is the situation that we have. We have a situation where we have a car that has a mass of 1,200 kilograms is traveling at a speed of 56 miles per hour, and at the point, then the driver applies the brakes for 3.5 seconds. And if the average force applied by the brakes is 1,850 newtons, we want to know what is the new velocity of the car. Okay, so I'm going to write all the information down first. Before I begin the problem, we have the mass, 1,200. The velocity is 25 meters per second. That is when I converted 56 miles per hour into meters per second. We get just about <clears throat> excuse me, 25 meters per second. The brakes apply a force of 1,850 newtons. And they do that for 3.5 seconds. Now, this might be a good uh, point to draw a little picture for this problem. I think it's actually helpful. So here we have a car, and its mass is 1,200 kilograms. And we'll just say it's traveling to the right with a velocity, initial velocity, of 25 meters per second. Now, the brakes apply a force. And which direction is that force applied? Well, that force is applied in the opposite direction to slow the car down. Okay, that's the way the brakes will apply that force. Now you should notice in this problem, we have the mass and the velocity and the force and the time. Well, the mass and velocity, we could calculate the momentum. And with the force and the time, we can calculate the impulse. And you remember there's a relationship between the momentum and the impulse with our momentum impulse equation. And that says that the mass times the change in velocity is equal to the force times the change in time. Now we want to know what the new velocity is, which we can use this equation to calculate the change in velocity. Because if we apply a force over time to an object, then that object is going to experience a change in velocity. So we can rearrange this equation so that it says the change in velocity is equal to the force times the time divided by the mass. And this equation will allow us to calculate the change in velocity. So we're going to do that right now here with the same information from the previous slide. We're just going to plug our values in. The change in velocity is equal to 1800 newtons. That's the force times the time. That's 3.5 seconds. And this is the impulse. Okay, This is the impulse on the top half of this equation. And then we have the mass of the car is 1200 kilograms. And that tells us that the change in the velocity of the car in meters per second is going to be 5.4 meters per second. Now, we were asked what is the new velocity. Well, the original velocity was 25 meters per second. That means the new velocity is the 25 meters per second minus 5.4, which tells us that the final velocity after the brakes have been applied for 3.5 seconds is 19.6 meters per second. Okay? That's all there is to it. We used this relationship between the momentum and the force, excuse me, and the impulse that tells us that the momentum or the change in momentum is equal to the impulse, and we apply the force over time to an object to get a change in velocity. Now, I just thought the end of this problem, you could actually be asked maybe and also to find out maybe the initial uh, momentum or the final momentum or the change in momentum. So I'm just going to do that really quick. The initial momentum is 30,000 kilogram meters per second. The final momentum at the final velocity at 19.6 is 23,520 uh, kilogram meters per second. And the change in momentum is the velocity, or the change in the velocity times the mass of the car, which is 6,480 kilogram meters per second. Now, I thought that I want to actually want to do this because this interesting relationship here just to point out about the momentum and the impulse. Remember, we can calculate now the impulse. The impulse was 1850 times 3.5 seconds, the force times the time. And that tells us that the impulse, which caused the change in the velocity, was 6,480. And you'll notice that the change in the momentum and the impulse are equal to each other, okay? This is Newton seconds. Well, if we cancel out um, one of the seconds here because a Newton is a kilogram meter per second squared, and we can cancel that with this second, then we get the same unit. So these units and these units are equivalent. That means that this value and this value is equivalent, which that is good because this equation, which is our momentum 
impulse equation tells us that the change in momentum, and this is the change in momentum, has to be equal to the impulse, and this is the impulse. And I just want to show you that those two values are equal to each other. Okay, so there you go. I hope you found the video helpful. We did a little problem with momentum and impulse using our momentum impulse equation, showing that the momentum and the impulse are equal to each other. So thank you very much for watching. Um, we'll see you in the next video. Please don't forget to do the following four things. Subscribe to my channel, get all my excellent chemistry, physics, and math videos. Leave me a thumbs up for this video. How about a nice positive comment in the comment section below? And don't forget, sharing is caring. Share this video with all of your friends. Show them how much you care. Thank you.